I've just been having a little wander around the streets of Zurich, and the first thing you notice is it's so nice. It's clean, the streets are organised, everyone's immaculately dressed, they've got these beautiful rows of bike racks, and to be honest, I do feel a bit sort of scruffy and out of place and generally British. But despite the awe of calm and general lack of danger, I have come here to test the fastest machine we've ever featured on The Gadget Show. The inventor of that machine is ex-airline and aerobatics pilot Arnold Wagner. 30 years ago, he began building prototypes for a futuristic transport device that took its design direction more from planes than cars. His latest model is the most advanced yet. This is it. Here we go. Nice, nice gate action. Oh, nothing here. <laughs> Someone's pinched it. <laughs> supposed to. It's gone. Machine. It's been stolen. <laughs> But Arnold was just toying with me. He had a grand entrance planned for his machine as it was lowered Hollywood style from the ceiling. Wow, this is proper Buck Rogers, Star Wars, pod racer kind of territory. Out in the sun, the machine bore more than a passing resemblance to a Tron bike. Its body is a Kevlar bond, and all the steel and tinted glass is top spec. So come and have a little look inside. Think of this as basically a kind of Swiss army bike. You've got your Back to the Future style DeLorean door, very nice. And if you come around and have a little look in here, flux capacitor, got one of those, brilliant. Air conditioning, mini sunroof, and my favorite bit of all, the sleeping compartment or boot. But style isn't everything because over the years on The Gadget Show, we've seen the best looking personal transport from the pumper bike to the wheel surf literally fall by the wayside when it comes to rideability. So, to find out if this two seater can stay the course, I'm about to be taken for a spin. We have ignition. OK, wish me luck. Oh my god, okay, that's fine, that's fast enough, that's fast enough. Okay, let's not die, let's not die today. With a top speed of 150 miles per hour and 0 to 62 in 4.8 seconds, this petrol driven machine is fast. Oh, it's like being in a sports car, fighter jet, and a motorcycle all at the same time. It's just great. It also costs over 40 grand. Come on! Woo! But if you've got the cash to spare, it's a small price to pay for something that's truly unique and road legal in the UK. <laughs> Sorry to stop the action. Just so you know, we've been sort of razzing about here for the last sort of hour, doing all these kind of crazy turns so you can see what it's like. But the people up there in the houses have called the police, so we have to stop. It was clearly time to leave, so the boys took me to a winding section of road to show me just how well the bike could lean. Look how close we are to the tarmac. I don't know if you can see this, but you can pick this up. We're so close. So close, in fact, we actually touched. OK, I'm in minor shock here. That was some pretty crazy cornering around that bend. And just to show you how far we were going down, this bike is designed to go to lean at about 52 degrees, which is similar to that of a sports bike around a track. But if you look here, what happened, we were leaning so far down, we've taken a big chunk off the fairing. We were really close to the ground there. It was, it was a bit hairy. The Mono Tracer's enclosed cabin means you can't put your foot down to keep it stable when stopped in traffic. To remedy this, two funky little stabiliser wheels have been built in and can be lowered when needed. Finally, it was my turn to get behind the, uh, handlebars. I was taken to the widest, emptiest car park in Switzerland. But it seemed that despite having a car and bike licence, they didn't completely trust me with their expensive machine. In gear, hold the switch, yeah. release clutch, release switch. Foot on clutch. In yes. gear. In gear. Release okay. clutch. So I'm moving and then I release that. Yeah. Although the Mono Tracer has similarities to both a car and a motorbike, it's neither one nor the other, which means you have to learn a new way of driving. Bon voyage. Press the clutch. Start the engine. And here we go. Hear me roar. Finally, this was my chance to play at being Han Solo. I was ready to burn some rubber. Top gun. Oh, God, I'm rubbish at this. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I had dreams of sort of showing off and being really good. And there's no way I can... Oh, God, I we... I'm not going to tip this over, am I? With the stabilisers down, it really was hard to drive. And the owners of this valuable piece of kit wouldn't let me put them up. And that meant I never got out of first gear. 
it appears that to go fast and furious on the Monotracer, you'll need a lot of practice, balance, and cash.